All right, so y'all, y'all, uh, yeah, hopefully y'all took notes and y'all got a video in your head for that. Amen. All right, good. Listen, so tonight, let me share my screen with you as we enter in. Now, remember the candlesticks, amazing how you have to get more information about it from Revelation than what the Bible says directly about it, uh, of all the pieces, which is interesting. But let's look at that real quick. Amen. And uh, let me, I got several places I need to be tonight, so I'm going to have to really have a good skill set in tonight. All right. So this is the golden candlesticks. Amen. And this is where you're going to find uh, that scripture. Amen. Exodus 25, uh, 31 to 39. And it says here, then you shall make a lampstand of pure gold. It is the only item inside of the most holy place that's of pure gold. Everything else is over, it's gold overlaying wood. Okay, so that they can make them out of it. This is a beaten work, as it says, the lampstand in its base and its shaft are to be made of hammered work, a beaten work, I love it. Its cups, its bulbs, and its flowers shall be of one piece with it. Uh, six branches shall go out from its sides, three branches of the lampstand from its one side, and three branches of the lampstand from its other side. Three cups shall be shaped like almond blossoms in the one branch, a bulb and a flower, and three cups shaped like almond, almond blossoms uh, in the other branch, a bulb and a flower. So uh, it says for six branches going out from the lampstand, and the lampstand, four cups shaped like almond blossoms, its buds and its flowers. Uh, a bulb shall be under the first pair of branches coming out of it, uh, and a bulb under the second pair of branches coming out of it, and a bulb under the third pair of branches, amen, coming out of it for six branches coming out of the lampstand. Their bulbs and their branches shall be of one piece with it, all of it shall be one piece of hammered work of pure gold. Could y'all imagine the skill set that was required to put this thing together? It says, so you shall make its lamps seven in number and they shall mount its lamps so as to shed light on the space in front of it. So that's its purpose, is to give light what? Uh, on the space in front of it. Its snuffers and their trees shall be of pure gold. It shall be made from a talent of pure gold. All these utensils, with all these utensils, it says, see, see, God keeps saying this over and over, y'all. See that you make them after the pattern for them which was shown to you on the mountain. I have found at least eight occurrences where God says this, ladies and gentlemen. So that lets you know that God is into details, precision, accuracy, do it right, do it right. And we for too long uh, have been the sons of scattered crazy religion. I'm the first one to admit that, where we just did things and we didn't know why. But you can see where God keeps on repeating this because it's got to be exact so that I might come and dwell among you and also so that I don't have to kill nobody. Amen. And that's clear in the scriptures where he talks about that concerning the priest, okay? And so uh, jumping back just a little bit, um, well, let me continue to go forward here. So the lampstand, amen. The lampstand was to burn continually 
was serviced by the priest in the morning and at sunset. There are the scriptures that prove that. Remember, this is a work of the priesthood, never a place for common people. Consecration is required. Now, please understand before I read the scriptures, what, what, what do we do with the New Testament church today? Consecration is required. What do we do? Consecration is required. Okay? That's what we need to make sure of before anybody enters into that dimension of serving or ministering to God. The fivefold ministry is to be the filter to protect against foreign and strange objects and strange fire, strange techniques, strange ministry. We're supposed to protect that because we're supposed to know the word. Exodus uh, 27, 20, 20, 20 and 21, it says, you shall charge the sons of Israel, what? that they bring you clear oil. That's critical because that's, that's a, a representation, a symbol of the Holy Ghost. A oil of beaten olives. And remember the candle is a beaten work. So are the olives, beaten olives, what, what for? For the light to make a lamp burn continually, right? And in the tent of meeting, outside of the veil, which is before the testimony, listen to this, priest only, Aaron and his sons shall keep it in order. That's what fivefold ministry is supposed to be doing. Keep it in order. From what? Evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a perpetual statute throughout their generations for the sons of Israel. That's us today. Leviticus 24, three and four says, outside the veil of testimony in the tent of the meeting, Aaron, a priest, the high priest, shall keep it in order from evening to morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations. It's not to end. He shall keep the lamps in order on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. Now, ladies and gentlemen, perpetual, continually, the only way that all of this has been fulfilled is through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when it actually ended its purpose. Because now, there's no longer the priesthood of Aaron, but there's now the priesthood of Melchizedek. We'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. But Aaron's priesthood has come to an end. Amen. And he came from a different tribe. We'll talk about that. Okay. So uh, here we have in this new place a change of atmospheres from natural things in the outer court to spiritual things in the most holy place, from brass to gold, from natural light to candlelight. The purpose is to give light in the most holy place. That's what that candle is for, to give light to give light, now it has a spiritual connotation. To give light, light, well, what are we talking about? The golden lampstand speaks of spiritual illumination and truth, divine truth. That's what it's speaking to. Uh, in this new place, we learn to understand, now this is where we're getting into something, by revelation. Let me skip to this first. Uh, um, I want us to understand uh, that olive oil in the Old Testament is connected with the Spirit. It's connected with the Spirit. 
So when Saul and David were anointed with olive oil, the spirit came upon them. So that's why they anoint things with oil. It was symbolic of what the spirit coming upon them. Okay. The oil and the lamps of the 10 virgins, see Matthew 25, 1 to 13, as described in the doctrine and covenants represents what? The Holy Ghost. Uh, and the anointing of Jesus uh, is described as being one through the Holy Ghost. See Acts 10, 38, if you need a reference to that. Okay. And then the olive oil or the Holy Spirit is the fuel for the anointing. Without this oil, the 10 virgins could not enter into the bridegroom's chamber. So it's important for us to understand that that lamp had to have pure virgin oil in it. And that oil so pure that it caused the light to burn longer than that of being corrupt oil, which burns faster. The purer, the slower the burn. Jesus, that'll talk, won't it? Won't that speak, you see? So how pure is the Holy Ghost? Is the Holy Ghost is your oil without mixture. Amen, all right. So uh, just uh, as the lampstand provided light for the priestly functions before God, Christ today, the simple meanings, is the light of the world, John 8 and 12. Then Jesus again spake to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So it's letting you know this is what the candlesticks represent as it relates to the Lord Jesus and also in Christ, who reveals the way to God. Y'all know this all by heart where he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father, uh, but through me. I'm the way, the truth. And so that brings me back to that statement over here uh, where we make the statement that, uh, let's see, is the purpose is to give light Let's see, let's see. So I'm all over the place now. All right, all right. Okay, I'll get back to that. But we know that that is for illumination and truth, divine truth. That, that's critical. Illumination and truth, spiritual illumination, truth and divine truth, all right? That should make scriptures jump in your head. But what I wanna do is in this new place, we learn to understand by revelation because what the light does, the light reveals things. The light illuminates things. So Paul being a doctor in the law, a theologian said under Gamaliel, praise from tabernacle language and understanding and in Ephesians 1.17, one of my favorite prayers, uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you what? The spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. He says, I pray that your eyes, the eyes of your heart may be what? Enlightened or illuminated. Daniel 2.28 tells you about God. It says, but there is a God in heaven that reveals. So this thing is going to reveal the hidden things, the things that are in the mind of God and make it, it known is what it's saying in Daniel uh, uh, 2.28. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10, but God had revealed. He uncovers, he illuminates them unto us how by the anointing by his spirit for the spirit does what search in all things yea the deep things of god so if you symbolically have the candlesticks in your life if you have entered into the sanctuary then one of the byproducts 
that you are in the sanctuary is that you start to walk in revelation. You start to walk in illumination. I hope that stirs everybody up here because it's your right. And if you didn't know where to go, the tabernacle is the blueprint telling you what you should see and what you should be experiencing. And one of the things you should be experiencing immediately upon this new baptism into this new dimension, which is usually accompanied by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is that you step into a different realm of spiritual dynamics. Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power, dunamis, after dynamite, revelation, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So you see, that's what happens. So when you step into that new dimension, revelation should be one of the things you begin to experience as you do what? Fellowship in ministering to God. So I got baptized for what? To be blessed? To speak in tongues? No, to minister to God. Hey, you want to know why you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? To minister to God, not to get your blessing. No, no, to minister to God. Not to preach only, not for miracle signs and wonders, but to minister to God. You should have that in your notes clear. That's why I want to baptize. So a lot of people don't know why they got the Holy Ghost, why they want it. But we've taught different things and we don't know that no it's for service as a priest are y'all with me on that now now speaking on this revelation now y'all gotta bear with me because i have to um try to share my screen again let me see if i could do that can y'all see this the resurrected man y'all don't yeah, see that okay y'all don't like big blank white screen. Okay, let me try again then to uh, get out of this stop share here. And then I guess I have to try to say share screen again. And uh, no, it's not there. So Eric, you gotta help me. How do I share another uh, document that I have open? What do I do? Um, if you just hit share and just hit your entire screen where it says just share screen, then whatever you're seeing. Whoa, 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 you're talking too fast. I got stop share up here. What do I do? Hit stop share. Okay, stop share. Got you. And then hit share screen. Share screen. Okay. And the first option should be to share desktop or share screen. You should okay. just hit that one. Okay, let's see, share. I don't see share desktop. I see whiteboard, iPhone, iPhone pad, iPad pad, stuff like that. Okay, do, do you see anything that says share screen? Share sound, optimize, I'm sorry. I should, let, let me just, uh, I should pause the record. I'm hitting it. All right, okay, now, okay. Y'all y'all all learning or y'all paying attention? Oh, y'all, I, I did that all on purpose so y'all could learn. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. Okay. Can y'all see this? Resurrected man? Everybody see that? You have to reshare your screen, Dad. Okay. All right. April, thank you. Yo, yo, just uh, share screen. All right. Share here. My goodness. Stop sharing. Okay, so let's try to do that again. Share screen, right? Okay, and then share here, but it's coming back to this right here. What's happening? And then, now? And then hit on pages. Yeah, pull your pages back up. Oh, so I could do pages right here? Yeah. Okay, and then go ahead on and hit recents and then resurrected mine and then open it. Amen. All right, okay, thank you. All right, y'all, thank y'all for bearing with me. And I think that was all recorded too, but hey, amen, I see the recording uh, in my screen is being shared. Okay, resurrected mind, that same prayer is how I opened that up. And that's how the Holy Ghost started talking to me about that. 
And of course, with some tabernacle teaching and stuff, this all came up. And as y'all can see, my date over here was 4-2019 when I woke up to that. Okay, now, uh, the resurrected man. Now, what are we talking about? The resurrected man is the man that got up, is the man that woke up, and, and he woke up in the spirit. He's born again, right? We're not talking about the resurrected Jesus. We're talking about the resurrected child of God. And so as a result of that, you see that the resurrected mind challenges the high places and high thoughts of the demonic realm. I have all of that uh, and whatnot and how we wrestle in the whole nine yards. But the old nature of man's imagination, we found out was only evil. So we had all of those scriptures that referenced the imagination of the thoughts and all of that kind of stuff there. We moved on and uh, the new mind approves the will of God in the earth. And that's Romans 12, one and two. Y'all know that passage of scripture about approving in the whole nine yards. And then the renewed mind unfolds, here it is mysteries and opens us up to revelation, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and learning. So Matthew 3, 11 says, Jesus answered them uh, to you, ladies and gentlemen, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, it has not been given. So mysteries, apocalypses, something hidden that is now made plain. First Corinthians 4 and 1, let a man regard us in this manner as servants of God and stewards of what? We're the custodians. Is that word studious? The stu uh, 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 stewards? Custodians of what? The mysteries of God. In other words, hey, priests, you're supposed to know this stuff. You're supposed to know how to handle the mysteries of God. Ephesians 1, 17, again, that the Lord, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit. There's a spirit of wisdom in this place that we entered into. The spirit of wisdom lives in the sanctuary, right? And, and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's what it's for. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10 uh, says, uh, but just as it is written, the things which eye has not seen, natural eye, natural ear has not heard, and which have not entered into the natural heart of a man is the way that should have been written. All that God has prepared for those who love him. For, God, for to us, God revealed them how? Through the candlesticks oil. Y'all see that? That gives us light and light is revelation. Light is illumination, right? So God has revealed it through anybody that's legitimately in the sanctuary and has had an encounter with the spirit and you should have. For the spirit searches all things. That's what you've entered into this place. Even the depths of God. So we have access as priest, not for the world. Worldly people can't even really get into the outer court without a priest letting them come in with a sacrifice that's acceptable, right? So um, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, for, what about uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 16? It says, now brethren, if I come unto you, Speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either how? By revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? So Paul was in that world and he understood it. Paul was a, a spiritual, intellectual man. Uh, he wrote most of our New Testament to show you the level of revelation he was walking in, okay? And so probably every doctrine was in the spirit that uh, the apostle Paul possessed. Every doctrine, he knew it. He had the, he was the apostle's doctrine, if I could say that to you. 
It says, it says, uh, boasting is necessary, though it is not profitable, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I'm talking to you about your inheritance. The apostle Paul, if y'all let me go far enough, I know I might sound crazy already to some, but listen, the apostle Paul is our apostle. Apostle, how do you come up with that? What, how are you saying that? What is it? Well, Peter was the apostle to the Jews and Paul is the fathering apostle to the Gentiles. That's us. So Paul is our model, right? And so Paul speaks this kinds of this kind of language to us, having an understanding that this is how we flow. We have the inheritance of our father Paul, apostolically in ministry. When it comes to ministry, oh y'all, y'all, give me a thumbs up if y'all okay with that. If I didn't lose you, because I could talk about that a little longer, y'all okay? All right, so 2 Corinthians 12, 7 says, uh, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure, lest I get too prideful about all of the revelation that I possessed. So you see, Paul, and listen, I trace that back. And ladies and gentlemen, Paul, let me, I want to encourage somebody. Paul walked in this revelation so strong because of him. He says, I thank my God, come on, that I speak in tongues more than ye all. What does tongues do? It says, he says uh, in the scripture, it says, how be it he speaks in mysteries. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's what speaking in tongues does. He's not speaking to men. He's speaking to God. And how be it he speaks in revelation. He speaks, and Paul says, I, I, I wish that you all speak with tongues. Then he says, I thank my God that I, I speak in tongues more than you all. And that caused that man to know how to tap into the spirit, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to encourage you all, if you don't use your tongues, that thing that helped you even get into the sanctuary, baptized into the Holy Ghost with another language of mysteries, speaking in mysteries. I never even got to the golden altar of incense with all kinds of prayers, but that's where that thing is exercised at. Are y'all with me? Everybody still there? Okay, so, so he says the abundance of revelations. In the name of Jesus, I declare the abundance of revelations on you. The abundance of revelation. Galatians 1, 11 and 12, it says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So ladies and gentlemen, the new believer is not academically taught. No, we don't learn that way. Don't come with your school system and school methods and college junk telling me that this is how I'm supposed to learn. You see? So that's only a select few people can process like that. But for all, if they tap into the spirit of God, they can flow by revelation and be able to get tap into that frequency and be able to revelate and to hear from the throne room and God unfolding things based on the measure of their gift. Y'all with me? Based on the measure of your gifting, God will supply what you need. Okay, amen. So if you, your gift is on teaching, then teach. But you're going to teach by that kind. You're going to come up by what? By revelation. By revelation. Don't apologize for it. I used to be scared, ladies and gentlemen, to preach what I was hearing because I never heard anybody else say it. And people often ask me, where are you getting that from? You see, and, and I didn't have an answer. 
And I didn't even know that I was in the sanctuary. I didn't have all those teachings, but I got there because I loved God and I really got born again. And I was encountering things without being taught. I, I came the hard way. What if you have disciple leaders that know the way? It'll be so much easier. It'll be so much easier if you, if you have somebody that knows the way. We don't need the blind leading the blind. Are y'all with me already? Y'all okay? Y'all getting this? Is this okay for y'all? Is this helping y'all with the pattern? Amen and amen. So uh, Galatians 1, uh, 13 to 16 says, for you have heard of my former manner of life in Judaism how I used to persecute the church of God beyond measure and try to destroy it. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my countrymen, being more extremely zealous for my ancestral traditions. But when God, my goodness, who had set me apart from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal what? His, to reveal, to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. Listen, I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood. Y'all see that? Listen, flesh and blood, Paul is saying, didn't teach me. I didn't get counsel by flesh and blood. But what he was saying is by revelation of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the revelations, the abundance of revelations that came through a separated, consecrated life that Paul speaks of and teaches all throughout the epistles of separation in understanding how the Holy Spirit works through regeneration. All of that, the apostle Paul possessed that knowledge. No wonder men came to him while he was in prison, ladies and gentlemen. It, he was in the dungeons where the sewer systems flowed down, ladies and gentlemen, below the city. That's where the dungeons were and that's where the sewers were. And ladies and gentlemen, do you not know that men came and Paul is standing in piss and crap? That's where he's living. Men went and kneeled down in that stuff only to hope that that old man would extend his hands through the prison bars to lay his hands and impart some gift upon them. That's the kind of man this apostle Paul was. They came because he was a different man. He was a true revelator and he had the blueprints in his spirit. Are y'all okay with that? Amen. Ephesians 3, 1 to 5 tells us, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, to you, what? how that what? By what? Revelation he made known to me the mystery. Look at those words, revelation, mystery. As I wrote a four in a few words, whereby when ye read, you may understand, you might understand my knowledge, what, in what, in the mystery, Paul had it, Paul had the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made unto the sons of men as it is what, now, what, it is now, it is now, this is the new game. This is the new way. It is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. How? By the spirit. Isn't that powerful? Revelation. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. And now revealed unto us by his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. What you talking about? Which apostles are you talking about? Or you talk, there's three kinds of apostles. Y'all remember that? Number one, one kind of apostle, only one, the chief apostle, the Lord Jesus Christ, the apostle of our confession. Second group of apostles, 
the apostles of the Lamb, the 12 that Jesus chose. Third set of apostles, they are here today, the ascension gift apostles. That is the apostles of today that sit in your midst. Paul is talking about them. Paul came after the 12. So Paul is talking about what is now here and what's here now is not the 12. You'll never have another 12, but you have the ascension, the ascended gifts of the fivefold ministry here. And because of that, they are those that are in the sanctuary, ladies and gentlemen, with the spirit of wisdom and revelation on them. Hear me. So the ascension gift. So he says what? It, as it is now revealed unto us by what? Holy apostles, his, his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. So one thing you should see normally in true apostolic and prophetic gifts is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom and revelation should be flowing through them. The spirit of, if they stuck in traditions, that's not an apostle. Because an apostle is revelating. They are always in a pioneering posture, getting new things. That's how you know. They got a lot of people calling themselves apostles right now, and they're stuck in, in, in Baptist religion and trying to call themselves apostles. They're still preaching old things, old religion. They're still caught up in that. That's not an apostle or a prophet, y'all. It's not. Don't let me get on that tangent. I'm trying to make sure that all the priests <laughs> understand what they're doing, but y'all can see the leadership things that are inside these passages. Amen. Uh, 1 John 2.20, y'all remember that one? It says, but you have an unction. That unction is the anointing from the Holy One. And guess what? If you have that, you and you know all things. That should be your confession tonight. Lord, I thank you that I know all things, especially the things that pertain to spiritual wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's what he's talking about. Look at what it says here. But you, and he's speaking to the children of God, have an unction, that word unction is anointing, from the Holy One, and you know all things. Look at 1 John 2, 27. It says, but the anointing, to make sure that you understand it, the anointing which I have received of him abides in me. That's how I pray that. It abides in me, and I need not that any man teach me. I don't need that. But as the same anointing, Holy Ghost, what does he do? Teach it, Daniel, of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it had taught you, taught Daniel, Daniel shall abide in him too. Y'all see how powerful this is? The church lost that and didn't know this piece as how literally it's part of the born again experience, part of entering into the sanctuary, part of the blueprint, part of the pattern that we should know that we should know. And this is the way that it goes and this is how it looks. So what's happening, can you imagine, uh, watch this, this brings concern. An individual who we've been calling born again, full of the Holy Ghost, and they don't have an appetite for the things of the spirit. Y'all seen it. And we want to certify them when actually the blueprint says that's an illegal priest. And they don't get themselves killed playing around with this stuff. They already did. They don't get revelation. And when we're going to finish with this sanctuary teaching y'all, 
We're going to have a clear picture, in, including this video here in this teaching that, hey, man, we better raise the standard, raise the bar as to what is really saved and born again. Because these factors should be in a person's life. If they are not, and we will still say they're saved, you could measure salvation too, right? How do we measure salvation? It started with, did they repent? Y'all don't want to go back there. That's out of court stuff, right? And you see the renewing of the mind. You see the putting off and the putting on of the old man. The Holy Ghost has started working in their lives, producing repentant lifestyle which is putting off the old, bringing me to a place of washings and a labor, because if I don't get washed at this labor, God will kill me if I step in the sanctuary, right? So the, so the, the fivefold ministry is standing at a gate, at that door saying, yes, this one is saved. Yes, this one is born again. Yes, the spirit of God is upon them. That's our job. Hey, we need to be fired because we have not been doing that job and we've been checking off people and saying, this one is saved, this one is born again, and they're children of the devil. Y'all got to excuse me, I'm being rough right there, but they, 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 they can go in or out, up or down. And they make us use the doctrine of backsliding. We, they force us to use the doctrine of once saved, always saved. And we have those arguments because we didn't do our job. But if a person truly follows this pattern, they will never turn back. We want to, yeah, yeah once saved, always saved is true. If they really walk this pattern. But we talk about backsliding because it compensates for our errors and our lack of good discipleship and our lack of overseeing and watching for men's souls. Y'all talk to me now. Y'all see what I'm saying? This is critical. So the evidence is one, illumination. You're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're hearing stuff. You're baptized in the Holy Ghost, when you read the scriptures, it unfolds. You're baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus' spirit is teaching you stuff. Sometimes I hear things that I can't even find in the Bible yet. <laughs> I might find it five years from now. But if we understand how we flow by revelation, then we may not be so dogmatic on the word. Because let me tell you how that spirit operates. On the Lord Jesus Christ, some men come and they say, Lord Jesus, we caught this woman in the very act of adultery. Now we know what Moses' law said, but what do you say? And you remember what he did? He stooped down and began to scribble in the sand. What he was doing was he was getting a download. He was listening to get a word from the Lord, to get revelation for the moment. And he stands up and he's got a word, one word for everybody. The one that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. And let me tell you, everybody left because the spirit of revelation hit and spoke what was in men's hearts and brought such conviction that a convicted woman went free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so revelation, he makes mud makes mud out of his spittle. One time he puts it on a man's eyes. Another time he touches a man's tongue with his spit. And ladies and gentlemen, 
that revelation, that rhema, that, 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 that hearing from the Father, because he says, I only do what I see the Father do, and I only speak what I hear the Father saying. So he's operating in real time with the Father. That's the other thing that this sanctuary brings, real time hearing and seeing. Should write that in. Real time. That's where Jesus lived. That's, he was the high priest of our confession. He was walking the sanctuary in front of us, the manifested, the real, not the type in the shadow, the real deal. He was walking it out. He was the real high priest. And yet Caiaphas spoke against him and, 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 and judged him to be put on the cross. Caiaphas, the high priest, put the real high priest on a cross. Can y'all hear me? Oh, when you read the gospels again, ladies and gentlemen, which all of you should be reading through your Bible all the time, go read again the accounts around uh, the death of Jesus Christ and see how much tabernacle language is in that. Go read it again, and you're going to see they were in the temple. They were in the court. Yes, the high priests, right? The scribes. All those people are operating out of an old system, thinking they're going to crucify the new system, and they're calling the new system blasphemous. And why? Because it doesn't look like Aaron. Why? Because it's Melchizedek. Ah, yo, yo. And guess what? You can't kill it. It's going to get up from the grave. And it possesses eternal life. And he is the firstborn of many brethren. And this teaching tonight teaches the brethren how to walk. Add another scripture. He is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. That's, a that's attached to that candlestick, right? That's attached to the candlestick. It speaks, ladies and gentlemen, if you follow the Old Testament in Samuel, can I just tell you all a little bit of the story? And trust me, you could go and look it up. But when Eli was the high priest, and he was a prophet. The Bible says, ere the light in the temple went out. Y'all know what happened? The priesthood was lazy. It was no longer functioning properly. Something happened. They were dishonoring God. And it says that the revelation of the word of God was scarce in those days. Why? Because the priesthood was out of order. The word wasn't common anymore. It wasn't moving like it should have anymore. And the Bible says that Eli was overweight. He was blind. And the Bible says he fell and broke his neck, which was symbolic of the headship gift is broken in the house. It's out of order. So that's why his, even his death was prophetic. His death was symbolic. This headship has got to go because it let the light go out in the temple. So every man was going his own way in that season because they had no leadership and they had no light. The priesthood was out of order. Out of order. Are y'all following me? So you see all those things, they're in your Bible. They're clearly, they're there. And we need to understand, you know. And so when Jesus comes and the Pharisees are listening to him preach, and he says, I am the light of the world. Those Pharisees got upset because they understood to some degree tabernacle language. And they were saying, what is he making himself out to be? You see, because they understood he was talking to them. He knew his audience. 
And he knew that the scribes, the Pharisees and Sadducees were there and he would slip into some tabernacle teaching and make some statements like, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the door to the sheep. You see, I am. He used those I am statements. He was directly assaulting the present day priesthood. Saying I'm manifesting here now. I'm the real deal. This is what the priesthood is supposed to look like. So they came to him with all kinds of questions about the Sabbath, the law, all kinds of stuff. He says, I'm the law of the Sabbath. A greater one, a greater one than the Sabbath is here. It's me, it's, it's me. You see, and those guys were offended. And they sought to kill him for the things that he was saying because they didn't want to see the tabernacle of Moses die. Write this in your notes. Old religion dies slow and dies hard. If you don't watch it, it'll crucify you when you're shifting. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying tonight? So tonight, if anything that I want you to take away really is, please receive the gift of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. Embrace it tonight. Embrace that tonight, it's yours. It really, it really is yours. I'm gonna stop the share, amen. Amen. Oh, y'all listening to that tonight. Please understand that this is how it really looks. This is what we should expect. And yes, this is how we should judge. Are we okay? Hey, judge it. You will know a tree by its fruit. That means judge it. So either you have the spirit or you don't. Why are we certifying people? That's been our error. All of us leaders are guilty of that, of letting people just pass through, contaminating. And if y'all hear what I'm saying by revelation, God in his mercy didn't kill us. He just, he just said, you know what? I love y'all enough. I just won't show up today. I won't let y'all see my face. I'll let y'all show my hinder parts. I'll show y'all my butt. That's what I'll show y'all today because y'all can't see my face. I'll kill all of y'all. Please understand that, ladies and gentlemen. Please get that. So it's critical that the new believer understands what they're getting into and what they're called to. It is the call of God. Every one of them must go this way. There should not be one feeble one among us. We should all be flowing in the power of the spirit if we are touched by the spirit. And then we're going to see gifts, gift, uh, gifts differing. We're going to see people of different intellectual levels. You're going to see all of that in the church. You're going to see all of that in the spirit. Yes, you will. You'll see all of that, right? And that's what we see with the apostles. Listen, I do not have a, a book from all the apostles. All of them didn't write books. Gives differing. Gives differing. Different functions. And the Lord has highlighted some of them in the word for us. Because you do know that all 12, including Judas, could have wrote books because they actually went out casting out devils, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. You see what I'm saying? Raise the dead. All of that stuff. They did that, including Judas. They did that. Every one of them. They could write books, but we got four of them as witnesses of the Gospels. There's some things that maybe have written that we don't have yet, but the Holy Ghost chose the canon that we read right now. So illumination and revelation is what your disciples and what you and I should be walking in. It is your right 
It is the way, that's the pattern, that's the way it is, period. If they're not operating in some dimension of that, where they could say even as children, I heard the Lord say, even Samuel the prophet as a little child didn't understand, but he was in the, a type in a shadow. He was in the sanctuary. Y'all remember? Come on, y'all follow me. Samuel as a child was in the sanctuary and he heard the voice of God, but he thought it was Eli calling him. See, he was in the sanctuary and even as a baby, he could hear the voice of God. He might have not known what he was hearing or what it was all about, but ladies and gentlemen, you're in the sanctuary. And if you're in the sanctuary, you can hear the voice of God. That's what I'm after here. That's what I'm after here. It's critical. It's critical that you understand that. Get it, get an understanding. We come up, somebody say this with me, we come up by revelation. <laughs> we come up, I'm telling you, we come up. I pray that you find a place in the sanctuary where you don't lean on commentaries, where you don't lean on books and authors. That all comes somewhere down the line. But the principal thing, is that you tap into the voice of the Holy Ghost and get illuminated. Get the spirit of revelation flowing in you. Every one of you should have that now. Should have that now. And when you do what he tells you to do, this is how you know it will manifest and it will come to pass. I hope all of y'all got that revelation. Y'all have all had that experience, excuse me. You have that experience where God told you something in secret. And he, it came to pass just the way you heard it. You're in that place. And, and that can increase. It can increase. And I don't know about y'all, but I want it. I want it. Give me more, Lord. Give me more revelation. Help me to go in deeper. So I dwell at this juncture of teaching in the most holy place. The Bible tells me in Jude, it says, building yourself up in the most holy faith. And that's happening in the most holy place. Praying in the Holy Ghost, that's where it happens. So real Holy Ghost baptized people, their tongue is a result of them graduating into the sanctuary. That's an evidence if it's real. So what's the fruit of this baptism of the Holy Spirit? Not tongues, but revelation, illumination, and ministry to the Father. We're gonna talk about more of that. But a result of being baptized in the Holy Ghost is you can see, you start to hear, the candle lights have lit my way. I can see into the most holy things. Now watch, watch, watch. This is what? A type in shadow of things in the heavenlies. Is that true? So they were literally to understand when we're in the sanctuary, we're seated in heavenly places. <laughs> Y'all understand? We see. So they literally, when they would fall before the tabernacle, like Joshua did in his days. Y'all remember we talked about that. Joshua them assumed that they were sitting in heaven. When they tore their robes and they fell and threw sackcloth and uh, put on sackcloth and ashes, they arrived. Whenever they built an altar in the wilderness and put a sacrifice on it, they were in heaven. Yeah. And God showed up too. God answered them because they understood the principles. They had mobile technology before we did. 
What am I talking about? They knew how to access heaven. Their, their cell phone was an altar. <laughs> you understand? They go to an altar and light up a sacrifice. God would look down, send fire down. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They knew how to do that. They knew how to do that. Every time you see men building an altar, you see some action happens from heaven because it's accessing the heavens. So the tabernacle is teaching you how to access the heavens. So now what we have? A different kind of sacrifice. What's the sacrifice now? You want God to show up? You got to offer a sacrifice, right? What's the sacrifice? The fruit of your lips. Giving thanks and praise. You offer an acceptable sacrifice unto him and he shows up. The real deal. None of that stuff stopped. We just have the real stuff happening now. Sacrifices are still being made, but it's not a, 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 a goat or a ram or a heifer. It's our praise. Build an altar, man. You know where my altar is? In this room. Oh, yeah, they got an altar up in here because stuff happens up in this room. This is my closet I'm in. He is here by faith. So I come in here giving thanks to the Lord and loving on God. This is the spot. Sometimes he rides in my truck, but right here, right here, there's action up in this room, y'all. There's action. I get on my knees. I lift my hands. I'm a priest. I'm showing you how to skillfully, y'all better build you an altar or no, oh, I got an altar. Because I believe all of y'all pray. I believe all of y'all have a spot. But get, to, get there and know how to build a fire. Know how to offer a sacrifice. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Come on, the courts. So you need to know how. That's the inner court. The only way you enter into that one is with thanksgiving and with praise, and he will manifest. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Listen. Oh, so much more can be said here. That priesthood thing is tearing my head up. I'm telling you, it's messing me up because I missed a few things, and I'm excited about what I'm hearing now. And the priesthood deals a lot with fathers and sons too, y'all. There's some heavy duty stuff, okay? So, but the, the critical point here right now, wave your hand if now you understand what the candlesticks basically are. It's illumination, it's revelation. Would you say that for me? I come up like the apostle Paul by revelation. He's our father, he showed us that. So I come up, I'm telling y'all, I have the gift of revelation. I have the spirit of revelation. Well, how can I say that? Paul said, I pray that the Lord would give to you the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. How did I get that? Hey, priest, a confession. A confession. I have it. You shall have what you say. So, Lord, I declare with rhema in my spirit, because I know this, I believe this, I declare that I have the spirit of wisdom. That's one monster all by himself. And the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him. My God, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, I encounter that. I'm telling you boldly, it is possible. I'm not boasting. I'm telling you truth as a father. This stuff is real. It is real. I hear from the Lord all the time. At least for me. And then he gives me words. And then he shows me things. And I wish I could talk about the prophetic because I'm finding out that not everything you see in here should be spoken. 
That's a quick prophetic class. That's prophecy, prophetic office 101. Everything you hear and see is not to be spoken. You better go talk to daddy and say, why have you said that to me? Or why have you allowed me to see that? That's the first stop. Go ask daddy. He let you drink. Why did I have that dream? No, you won't go. You know, I had a dream in his interpretation. You better go talk to daddy about that. And say, father, why? Watch this, y'all. Watch this. It's okay to come and say, elder, I know that you see and I know that you hear. I had a dream. Could you interpret? But really, you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And if you want to do a dream interpretation 101, go to the book of Daniel and find out that every time God showed him something, they went on a fast. And they prayed and sought to even understand somebody else's dream if it was necessary. But he said, I woke up one morning and the visions that God had given me troubled me. So I sought the Lord in fasting and sackcloth in prayer. So you know what? I don't need no dream interpretation class. No, no. I walk with him. I walk with him walk with him. So uh, another quote from my spiritual father. He says, Daniel, you will never miss anything that God has for you. You'll never be, be late for any appointment if you learn to walk with him. He is right here. He lives with me. How I'm gonna miss God. Yeah, yeah, that sounds deep, don't it? I don't want to miss God. Oh, well, what you saying? What you talking about? What you saying? You don't want to miss God. You, you mean to tell me you're taking a break? What, what you doing? What are you saying? You go in and out? What are you saying? See, we say some poisonous stuff in confessions to our spirit. You cannot miss what God has for you if you learn to walk with him. Know that he lives in you. Amen. All right. So I stopped the recording.